it's story time. <clears throat> um, story around transitions. And uh, I've tried really hard to make this seem maybe business-like, but the hero's journey isn't just business-like. It's your life. Socrates said the unexamined life isn't worth living. And um, if anything, I <laughs> adhere to that. It's like just what I live by. Um, and there's a lot of people who think that that's not the way you're supposed to live. They just be happy. There's a lot of books out there on just be happy. And <clears throat> if that's for you, then you should turn this video off right now because what I have to say doesn't adhere to that. I think happiness is an anecdote. It's, it's something that we get to experience to its most utmost depth when we've actually done the work, you know, with Socrates and the unexamined life isn't worth living is, um, and it doesn't mean like be all serious and dig into everything, but it does mean to pay attention to the things that cycle through your life. And I had the opportunity yeah, last night to experience that. And I'm going to tell you a story. So um, the story is, is um, four years ago, I was completing my dissertation and I'd been working on it for seven years and going back and forth with my committee. And we were at the stage of cross your T's and dot your I's. And um, I had gotten, you know, down to the wires. I'd been raising my son alone and um, had a nice house out in, out by the river and we had a pretty good life, but things were really starting to cut. You know, it was crunch time. I was finishing that paper and I'd been working with fire and the collective unconscious of something other than human. So I'd spent seven years with fire and the golden gate bridge and eco psychology and, and, uh, learning to speak a language other than human. And I was, you know, $200,000 into an education and I was holding on by the skin of my teeth. I loved the work I'd done, but it had, it had consumed me, you know, like fire would, um, it had consumed me and, and I had, um, quit working for somebody else. I was part-time tutoring and, uh, just was getting, you know, it was like, I just got a few more months I got to get through. And then at the very last minute, um, somebody on my committee, a professor at Penn State pulled, pulled the rug out from underneath me and last minute said, Oh no, this isn't what we want. This you have to change everything. And, um, I didn't have anything left and my graduate school didn't, um, didn't care to look at the paper trail, didn't, for whatever reason, it, it wasn't accepted. So my dissertation at this point, my PhD is PhD, ABD, all but dissertation. And um, maybe I'll go back and finish it, but it's not the point. The point is, is that I was devastated. And I, um, I threw my dissertation, 300 pages of it, on the floor, and I threw all the pictures of fire I'd taken on the floor, and I walked on them for the next four months. I just walked on them and, um, didn't quite know what to do. You know, I'd, I'd really just, I'd basically been on this shamanic descent with fire unguided and financially it had, it had gotten me. And, um, I, I was, I just wanted to be dead. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't fathom what had happened and um, you know my son was grown and he was going off to college and every day I woke up crying and I'd drive to to my tutoring students SAT tutoring and I would cry on the way and I was fine while I was with him and then I would cry on the way home and I hid this from my son I didn't think he needed to worry about it but I just couldn't, I didn't, I couldn't, and I didn't know how to tell anybody because I had been, I had been the person everybody turned to for so long. I was the family coach. I was the, um, you know, I was the PhD student. I was the, I was the, the go-to and I had a lot of friends, I thought, and 
I don't know exactly why they stopped being my friend, except I guess I became a burden. Or I didn't know how to reach out, or they didn't know how to deal with me reaching out when I was the one that they would reach out to. But my life got smaller and smaller, and that's when I decided, hey, you know, is there something that I've always wanted to do that I should just go ahead and do? Some great risk. And uh, the answer was yes, I've always wanted to travel in an RV. So I knew that on the other side of the RV was I could, you know, I can always kill myself later. It'll always be there. And that's not to be flippant. I was really in that place. So I let everything go in my house and I traded my truck for an RV and I I, I took off. And um, before I did that, I... I sort of wrote out my life to somebody and and just came to some realizations about some things that have been said to me that just hurt. So I drove off into the desert and I I I um I made videos every day and I worked through some stuff but I've been stuck in this loop. I've been stuck in this place. And it's because I didn't have the transition. I didn't have that, that completing that dissertation was a threshold moment that got aborted and there was no acknowledgement. And, you know, I have an uncle that says I, my, my education is, um, questionable after 12 years of college while I raised my son, which hurts like hell that somebody would say that, um, you know, especially a family member who's supposed to care about me. And, um, and nobody really knew except my aunt, the impact that this had had on me. And she said to me, Corey, it's like a death. And I agreed, but I still kept it bottled up inside of me. And then yesterday, um, somebody said to me, you know, you're really a philosopher. And I was like, well, yeah. And she said, but, but I thought you were a psychologist. And it's like, well, yes. And I'm both. And as an eco psychologist, I really am a, a philosopher. And if it, the birds are flying around here. And um, that chain of thought led me to remembering, to thinking, why do I feel, why, why am I feeling apathetic? Why, why am I not, I used to get a whole shitload of stuff done all the time. And, and, and what's happened? What has happened? Where did my hope go? And, um, and I traced it back to my dissertation. And when I got my master's degree, I didn't walk. And I didn't realize that that was a big deal until I went to my cousin's graduation this year. And she was getting her bachelor's degree. And I watched the people who were getting their master's degree have that mantle put upon them. And I didn't do that. So I quite often forget I have a master's degree or a PhD, ABD, because I never celebrated it. I never... Celebrations are not just about having a party. They're about that threshold moment. They're a rite of passage. They, sig they, they, they signify your own psyche and your, your mind and your heart and your soul that something has changed here. You've become something more, something, something else. And so in the hero's journey, um, these are vital. And this is a really great example of getting stuck in a place um, simply because I didn't recognize the need for a rite of passage. So my next step is, besides grieving and going through the whole process of grief, because I'm very angry. <laughs> it's a bird. I'm really angry, and I've cried a lot. And um, it's not about restitution. It's about reconciliation in me. That's how things that's how things can shift. That's how my life can continue. That's how I can get unstuck and get that incredible hope and anticipation and love back in place of the anger and the belief that it doesn't matter how hard I work, it's not going to work out anyway, because that's just not true. It was just